This video is a little guide on how to do thin layer chromatography or TLC. So TLC is a really useful technique in the laboratory for either checking the purity of a compound you've got or comparing compounds against um, known other compounds and finally for checking the progress of a reaction you might be carrying out. So the things you're going to need to do a TLC are your samples that we're going to check, a beaker to act as a TLC tank, we're going to need a watch glass in order to go over the beaker to stop the solvent evaporating, and hand things that help handily are a small piece of filter paper to go in the bottom to stop your TLC plate sliding around, and a larger piece of filter paper that's had the top and bottom edges cut off that can go in and lines the side of the TLC tank like so. And what will happen is that when you put your solvent in the TLC tank and it runs up the plate, it will also run up and soak this piece of filter paper and it means that the environment, the atmosphere in the TLC tank will become saturated with solvent so that when your solvent is going up your plate, your TLC plate, for example here, then it won't evaporate into the atmosphere around, it will stay there. So the TLC plate is an aluminium plate with a thin layer of silica gel, so silica dioxide, and that, this silica is your stationary phase. And the silica has got lots of SiOH bonds on the surface of the silica, and it's has a very large surface area, so it means there's lots of possibility for hydrogen bonding interactions to occur. And so more polar molecules will undergo more hydrogen bonding, and so therefore they will stick to the silica and move slowly up the plate, whereas things that have much less polar groups and so can't do so much hydrogen bonding will move more quickly up the plate as they interact more with the solvent than the silica. So the first thing we need to do on our plate is to draw ourselves a nice straight line about a centimetre from the bottom and check that the plate is intact and it's not got lots of silica coming off the sides and then what we're going to do is put a little pencil mark where we're going to do the spots. We're going to then take our compounds. Now TLC is a very um, sensitive technique actually and so you don't need very much of your compound. So we're going to take a small amount of each of our compounds, a few milligrams, with a micro spatula, and pop them in a test tube, on the small test tubes. And this is the other compound we're going to have a look at. So we don't know what they are, unknowns. And pop that into another flask there. And then we have our TLC eluent. So that's the solvent system that we're going to use, the mixture. And this mixture can change depending on the TLC you're running and depending on the reaction conditions and what kind of compounds you're looking at. And generally it's a mixture between two different solvents. One, which is the more polar component, so in this case we're going to be using ethyl acetate. And for our non-polar component we're going to use petroleum ether. And it means that if you have these two systems you can change the ratio, if you want to, of petroleum ether to ethyl acetate, of non-polar to polar, and it means it will change the rate at which things move up or down the plate. And so the mixture that I'm going to use is going to be a 50-50 mixture. So I'm going to be using five milliliters of our petroleum ether and five milliliters of ethyl acetate. And we're going to take a pipette and add a little tiny bit of ethyl acetate to each of these tubes because we want to dissolve our compounds. So we use about half a mil in each one. So we use the polar solvent to make sure that they do dissolve. Doesn't matter if they don't completely dissolve, enough will be in solution. And we take our TLC spotters. So this is a capillary tube. In this case, it's one that's been drawn out 
with the flame in order to make it much smaller and you've got a very fine edge on the end. And we're going to take that and we're going to dip it into our solvent here. And so capillary action draws it up the tube. So it's now drawn up to here. And then you very carefully place that on the line where you've got one of the spots. Very carefully allow the solvent to run out and you form a spot there. And that solution needs to then evaporate. And your solvent is then loaded onto the, your compound is loaded onto the TLC plate. And again, we're going to take our compound, very gently touch it. You can see, hopefully, spot developing. There we go. With those. So now we've spotted our two compounds onto the plate. We can't exactly see where they are at the moment, and we can take our solvent mixture and put it in the TLC tank. The important thing to do is one, make sure that the filter paper is nicely wetted, and the other is to make sure that the level in the tank isn't going to go above the level where you've drawn the pencil line. And we're going to pop that in and allow that then to then begin to start soaking up and it will go up the plate and then you want to take it out just when the solvent has reached within about a centimetre or so of the top. Okay, so I'm going to stop the TLC now, so take the top off, reach in, take it out and very quickly draw a line where the solvent got to. So that's a pencil line marking off the limit for where the solvent reached on that plate. And we're going to allow it to dry now in order to make sure all the solvents evaporated. Now obviously we can't see our compound so we need a way of visualising where our spots have reached on the plate. Now there are two ways of doing this. One way is if your compound has lots of um, aromatic nature, conjugation, so it absorbs UV light, we can use a UV light to see where that compound is. Because these plates have been impregnated with a fluorescent dye that glows under short wavelength UV light, so 254 nanometers. So if you put this plate, as we'll do in a moment, under a UV light that is at 250 nanometers, the plate will glow a bluey green color. But if there are any compounds that absorb UV light on the plate, then they will absorb the UV light instead, and so you get dark patches, spots, where those compounds are. So we can use a UV light to see those. However, some compounds don't have very strong, what's known as chromophores, so they don't have groups that absorb UV, and then we need to use a visualizing technique in order to do that. So we use a chemical dye, then, which will react with functional groups that are present in our molecule and change colour when they do so in order to be able to look and see where those compounds are. So the first thing we're going to do is see if we can get the UV light to work. So come in here, switch on our power hopefully. There we go. And we'll pop this under here. Let's see if I can bring the camera up. And hopefully you can see that we have two spots, one here. And one here. And so we're going to draw around those. And bring them out. So this is where our spots are. This one's higher than this one, this one's much lower down. But we can use a chemical stain instead. And so one of the simplest to use is potassium permanganate. So it's a nice purple compound. And then when it reacts with things that can be oxidized, it itself gets reduced. And so the form of reduced manganate is yellow. Now to do that we need to put it into a 
flour into a beaker. And we need to make sure that the, all the solvent has evaporated from the surface of our plate. Because this is permanganate, it's an aqueous dip. And if there's any organic solvent left on the plate, then it means that the dip won't get fully soaked into the silica and so it won't properly develop. So we then pop it in, sink it all the way down, pull it out, and then you just hold it against the side in order to allow the excess to drain. And then we usually take a paper towel and drain the remaining permanganate off. Now the reaction usually needs to be helped a bit. So we use a heat gun but you don't want to overdo it. So the important thing is to you warm it to get the reaction to occur, but we want to make sure that we don't overheat it because otherwise the whole plate will expose and go yellow. And so now you can see, hopefully, more clearly, that where we had our UV spots, we now have two yellow dots. And so that can be used as a record. So the final thing we need to do is work out what the retention factor or RF is. And to do that, we measure from the distance from the baseline to the solvent front. So in that case, it's 40 millimeters. We then take the measurement from the center of the spot to the baseline. So in this case, eight millimeters and in this case 5 millimetres and so the retention factor for this one is 8 divided by 40 and the retention factor for this one will be 5 divided by 40 and you note that RF so it will be a fraction of a whole let's find ourselves a calculator so the retention factor for the first spot RF is 0.2 retention factor of RF for this spot is 0.125 and so in your lab book the important thing to do is to draw out a sketch of your TLC plate say what the retention factor is for each of those spots to say which solvent system you use so in this case 50-50 ether acetate petrol and also to say what visualization technique you've used in order to visualize your spots and see where they are so hopefully that will help you with TLC.